Hey everybody, uh, Matt here with another piano blog, piano question and answer. Uh, could be any sort of question and answer. You can ask me whatever you want. It doesn't have to be about piano, but I'm probably most qualified to answer your piano questions. Um, and a lot of the questions that we've been getting or that I've been getting lately have been kind of broad. So I'm going to try something a little bit new today and uh, spend all of this video just on one specific question so that I can kind of go a little bit into depth rather than try and rush through everything that we've gotten or that I've gotten. And then what I'll do is uh, in a couple of days I'll make another video uh, talking about some different questions. We'll just kind of see how that goes. So the first question on the list here has to do with how to structure your practice time. Uh, and uh, this person actually asks, uh, what's the best way to practice, practice or structure my practice time, especially in terms of technique and how much time I should be spending on technique versus my music. And he actually has a lot of time to practice every day. This is a student of mine uh, who, who emailed me this question. And uh, so this will vary from person to person, but the, the basic question has to do with uh, when I sit down to practice, if I have X amount of time, how much should I spend on my technique? How much should I spend on my music? And so on. So the context of this is super important. Um, the first point I really want to make whenever it comes to structuring practice time, because it's a question I get pretty often, is don't try and substitute structuring practice time as for building a practice habit. I think when you're just starting out at the piano, it's actually more important to have a good habit of practicing the piano every day and to worry about how you're structuring that practice a little bit down the road. Uh, and the reason is, especially for adult students, a lot of adults, they kind of jump into piano and they're really excited and they're gonna practice all this time. And uh, af as time goes by, they find that because they've committed themselves even sort of subconsciously to like practicing for hours every day or something like that, that, that sitting down at the piano becomes more and more of a problem and they just have a lot more resistance because they've committed to all of this daily practice. And so what I think is better, before you start thinking about what's my practice uh, routine going to be like, or how am I going to structure my practice time, is that you're just building a habit of sitting down at the piano every day. What I suggest to people, for example, is sit down at the piano every morning when you wake up, even if it's only for a few minutes, or sit down at the piano when you get home from work, you know, first thing before you eat or anything, even if it's only for a minute or two. And what this will start to do kind of subconsciously is it's gonna lower that resistance towards sitting down. If you tell yourself, now for the rest of my life, I have to practice for four hours a day, it's probably not gonna work out. Even pros often can't do that. So uh, even though you feel really excited, don't think that that's gonna power you through for the months and years of practice that are really gonna pay off. What you want to do is form that habit. Um, and then, down the road, you can start thinking about how am I going to structure that routine. But I can't tell you uh, just how important and how many times, time and time again, I've just seen, especially with adult students, that it's the ones who make that long-term habit that really have success, uh, rather than the ones who just kind of jump in and uh, uh, are really excited and practicing a whole bunch at first, but then kind of peter out. So let's say that you've got that going though and you've played for several months and piano is really a part of your life and you've got to have it and now you want to talk about um, how to structure your time. So a lot of this depends on your own context including your goals at the piano and how much time uh, that you have. So let me give you a couple um, extreme examples. Um, if your goal is simply to sit down, play for a few minutes for fun uh, all the time, which is a great goal to have uh, because it means that you're, you're enjoying the music, but you're not really there to, to practice for hours every day and you're not trying to make it to Carnegie Hall, I would suggest 
spending the amount of time that's only a few minutes practicing your technique that is pretty much just concomitant with what it is you're trying to learn. So maybe you have a piece that has a new five finger pattern in it. Take some time to practice that five finger pattern. It's great if you can really concentrate for even just a couple minutes on the very specific type of technical stuff that I tend to talk about. So if, you've, if you're a student of my piano lessons, you know, and I talk a lot about hand alignment and stuff like that, spend some time thinking about that, but uh, don't let it just kind of consume your thinking in your day uh, to the detriment of actually enjoying the music. So that's kind of one extreme. Another extreme uh, would be uh, the example of myself. When I was an undergrad, and I was practicing several hours a day. Uh, my major was piano performance uh, and so I would wake up in the morning and the first thing I would think was how am I going to structure my entire day <laughs> which is built around uh, being better at the piano and practicing the piano. So in that case I would have an hour or two a day that I could really devote to technique and the way I would structure that time uh, what worked well for me was to pick a key uh, say pick D major and then I actually had a list of everything I could possibly think of in that key so all sorts of different scales all sorts of different arpeggios chord progressions um, just all you know finger dexterity exercises arpeggios at the seventh things with different fingers you know and I was at a very advanced level even at that point um, comparatively I don't want to sound too cocky, but so, so I had a lot that I could really work down. Now, one problem with the piano is that because uh, you're playing, you have an 88 key instrument in front of you, the options for technique are pretty much endless. I mean, there's, uh, if you just wanted to sit down and play technique books, you could easily spend your entire life just reading through all the different techniques that people have devised. But what I did was picked uh, a list of the most uh, crucial things in say a specific key and that list would take me about an hour to get through because I would kind of repeat things and really try and work on them and I would work on that key for a week so I would do all I would go down this list say in D major of all these different technical patterns and I would do that for a week and then the next week I would do a, uh, I would move to a different key uh, often it would be a key of a piece that I'm working on or sometimes I would just try and like keep moving around the circle of fifths or, or you know what have you and what I found the reason this worked well for me is that after a week things would start to sink in and I found that that worked better than just trying to get through a specific exercise in all the keys every day. Uh, and then when I would return, say, to D major in a couple months, that would still kind of be my muscle memory and I wouldn't have to do all that preliminary work of learning all the technique over again. So that's at a very uh, advanced level where you have lots of time to practice. And in that case, even then, I wouldn't spend more than an hour or an hour and a half on that, uh, that amount of technique. Now, another thing it's interesting to note, and maybe this is kind of a dirty secret of pianists, but I, uh, most of the kind of touring artists that I know, even are, that are playing at that world-class sort of level, don't spend tons of time every day on practicing scales and stuff like that. And the reason is that they've practiced their scales for a decade or so, and it's just like they might do some brush up work, but it's just not an efficient use of their time uh, because it's so, so ingrained and they're going to get that technique practice as they're playing the music anyway. So that also speaks to kind of context. Uh, and what you want to ask yourself is how new is this technique for me? So if you're just starting out, say you're taking the beginner uh, piano lessons classes that I have and you've just learned, say, the D major five finger pattern, in that case, you might want to spend a fair amount of time practicing that D major five finger pattern because it's totally new to you. I, on the other hand, am probably not going to sit down and spend an hour practicing the D major five finger pattern because I have other things to do that, that are more efficient. Um, so that hopefully gives you kind of a sense of the different contexts. Uh, and then as a general rule, um, if you have, say you have 30 minutes that you're going to practice, 
uh, you know, 10 minutes for technique, 20 minutes for music. That's kind of like a good rule of thumb. I wouldn't do so much technique that you have only a couple minutes to learn the music. Um, I don't know why we have actually so much of a divide uh, sometimes in music between technique and music because the whole point of technique is that you can play the music better, right? So uh, what I would suggest doing, especially if you have limited time, is try to work the technical practice into the pieces you're playing. So if you're playing a piece that's say in D major, uh, try and find uh, the, the movement patterns in that piece that you could practice or try and find the scales in that piece that you could practice rather than really having a sharp separation between the two. In fact, one of the things that I emphasize in my Fundamentals of Piano Technique course is that after you learn these movement patterns, and I give some examples, you want to actually be applying them to the pieces that you're learning. And, and a really good technician, uh, when he or she looks at a piece of music, is able to take that music and say, oh, okay, this is this technical pattern here in this measure, or this is what's happening here in the right hand in this measure. So it's not as cut and dry as just like, you spend an hour on technique, you spend an hour on music. The more actually that you can integrate them, the better. So uh, it's a broad topic. Um, I've given kind of two extremes. Uh, again, ask yourself how new the technique is for you. If it's a new thing worth focusing on, um, you, you want to repeat it quite a lot um, until it kind of becomes ingrained uh, in your body and your muscle memory so you don't have to think about it. Uh, and then you can build on that to other things. And then the other, the other kind of half of the equation is uh, do what in, in your context is your own goal. So if you're, if you're really trying to become a concert artist and you're really serious about practicing your technique and practicing for hours a day, that might be an hour of technical practice a day. If you're trying to play for enjoyment, that might just be five minutes to review some technique and some music theory and stuff like that. So hopefully you can use that as at least as a broad, uh, some broad principles to apply to whatever your own context is. And feel free to ask me if you have any follow-up questions about how to structure your uh, piano practice time. And I'll see you in the next video. Uh, as always, you can email me questions to matt at pianoblog.com and visit pianoblog.com for more videos like this, for classes, for everything else, and I'll talk to you soon.